so today we're going to go through the unboxing of your Flex Ultrasound that you just got. So we're going to open this up. This is our external Plano case. In there, depending on the package you got, you might have a case, you might have multiple probes. We're just going to go through these bit by bit. But if you just got the Ultrasound, there's an extra piece of foam just for protection in there. Feel free to take that out. You have a little more space in your case for other stuff. So you have your Flex Ultrasound. We'll go through the buttons and different things on that. Also in your case, you're going to have your probes. If you got multiple probes, they're going to be um, just in bags like this with covers on them. If you got just one probe, we will go ahead and pre-install. I'll show you how that's done here in just a moment. You have a car charger. You have a part one of your ultrasound charger. These are like computer chargers, so you do need to plug that in tight. This comes apart here. There is a little light when you plug it into the wall. This green light will turn on, so make sure when you go to charge it that that green light is on. There's your wall lens. It's a two-prong. You have two straps, so if you want to hang the flex either from a stand or over your chest, kind of crisscross over your chest, there are two straps and lots of different mounting options there. There is a USB thumb drive with some more training material. There's also lots of great training material on our newsletter and our YouTube page as well. You have keys for your case and then extra rings. These S carabiners are removable and if you want to put there's rings on here, you can put rings back on depending on the mounting option you want for your flex. But those are both in there. And then you have your manuals, your quick start guide. There's a bovine fetal aging table and some various settings charts depending on which probes you got. So right now we're going to go ahead and go through your actual ultrasound. So a lot of times there's a screen protector on your thing just for shipping. Just go ahead and take that off. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, you can leave it on if you want a little longer, but it's just like the screen protector on your phone. So it's up to you when you take it off, but be careful when you're washing, don't get chemicals or anything under there while that screen protector is still there. So on the front of your machine, I'm going to go through the buttons here in just a moment, but we're going to go through installing your probe. On the top of your machine here, this is your probe connector. This is probably the weakest part of the machine, so you need to be very gentle and careful with this. Part of the benefit of having a multi-probe machine is you're able to change those probes, obviously, whereas a fixed probe gives you a little bit more durability. But this is um, a connection point. There's lots of pins, lots of electricity, so just be careful with that. Make sure you don't get moisture in there. Keep it covered if you can, or when you're storing it, keep your probe installed. Right here, you have your power connector. So this is where you're going to plug your charger in. This is our Limo port. So if you purchased goggles or you want to go out to our external monitor or to any VGA, you can get a cable and go right there. If you're not using it, just plug that little tab in, squish it in. Um, you have a power button, a freeze button, and an exam button. And then there's some lights on top here that will indicate whether it's charging or on, things like that. We do have more videos also up on YouTube that will go through the buttonology and settings more in depth. So take a look at those if you want to visit that a little bit more. But as far as taking your probe out, plugging it in for the first time, you've got the end of your probe. It's probably hard to see on here, but there is a little slot. And on your ultrasound, there is a little line. So you need to line the slot up with the line and it will just gingerly press down and then you will twist that collar. It's a pretty tight connection so you do want to make sure that collar is screwed all the way down. That's just giving it extra protection so if there is a yank or a pull, things like that, um, hopefully it keeps it as st stable as it can. So once your probe is screwed in, make sure it's screwed all the way down. Go ahead and turn your machine on. Make sure whenever you are changing probes that that power is turned off. You always want to change probes or plug probes in with power turned off. That's what this handy dandy little sticker says. So just make sure you turn your machine off before you switch probes. So now our machine is on. We just obviously just hit the power button there on the top to turn it on. So the end of my probe, we've got the little case here. 
This, this is just a micro-convex probe. The gray part is the most delicate part of your probe. Please be careful and try to cover that when it's not in use. So if I just push on my hand there, we can see we have an ultrasound image. On the front of your ultrasound, you have all of these buttons. And you, like I said, check out that other video going in depth more the, with these. You have a freeze button, a menu button, escape button. These are your zoom, the left and right arrows, and your focus changing is up and down arrows. You have an enter button, a measure button, a store and recall button. Pretty basic. We can go through those, like I said, in another video. But looking at your ultrasound screen, at the top you'll see the date. On the bottom, this is telling you what preset exam you're looking at. So this one is saying mode A. We always turn on to mode A, but if I press the exam button at the top, it changes and goes to preset mode B, C, D, and it goes all the way through there are eight preset exams. But like I said, it will always turn on to A. We can talk a little bit more about this. If you guys have questions, feel free to give us a call. The D is your depth. It is in millimeters. F is focus. It is also in millimeters. This is your wireless and device signals, and this is your battery. So those are what you're actually seeing on the screen. Like I said, if you want to know more about what happens when you do, when you hit the menu button and things like that, check out the other videos. We'll go into that more in depth. The last thing I want to highlight on this flex machine are the sides. These are our heat plates. So this is how this has an internal lithium ion battery in it. So that heat has to, as it's processing, has to come out somewhere. So these are those heat dissipation plates. There's a little warning sticker on there. They do get warm. That is normal. You want them to dissipate heat. So just make sure, depending on how you're set up and how your stands are, that these can have good airflow and have that heat dissipation through it. But if you have any other questions, just let us know. All right, so you went ahead and purchased a 2.0 monitor to go with your Flex. So today I'm going to show you, you know, taking it out and what you have, how to set it up. So in there you have a monitor. You have a strap. If you did not purchase a RAM mount kit to mount it, you have a strap. You have a charger and a manual. So your charger is the exact same one that you use for your ultrasound. So just make sure this is plugged in and when you plug it into the wall that green light turns on. So you can use these chargers interchangeably, it won't hurt anything. So on the monitor, when you go ahead and open up the sunshade, there's a sticker here that tells you that you need to flip it over on the back because there's a hard shut off switch on these monitors. That is because it is a LCD monitor and it's touch screen on the front. There is a small draw on that battery all the time if there's not a hard shut off switch. So if you're using it often, it's fine to leave this switch on. But if you do want to store it and keep that battery full, make sure you turn it off. But to charge it and to use it both, you need to have this switch on. There's a little sticker right here that says where it is. Just flip that switch on. To charge it, your charging port is over here. So that switch is on. I'm going to go ahead and flip this over, zip it back up, and open up the front of this screen. So to connect it to the flex, I am going to play Jenga with a great sunshade. So on the front of the screen, there's a power button in your bottom right. Go ahead and turn that on. Make sure your flex is turned on as well and they should connect for you once everything wakes up. So you have an image on your flex, and there is the image on your screen. I can move this sticker out of the way for you. So you should see the same screen that you're seeing on your flex. It's just gonna be an image, a mirror image of that, so you can see, or actually a duplicate image of it. So whatever you're seeing on the flex, you will also see on this wireless monitor. Um, it's pretty simple, it works well, the monitor. Is very simple to operate. You have a power button. The paw print button is your input button and I'm going to show you that in just a moment if we want to switch to direct wired instead of wireless. The book button is your menu button and then the left and right arrows for toggling. The lights on the bottom, you have a green light when it's on, I believe it's red or orange if it's off, and then when it's charging 
there's a kind of red or orange light and when it's charged it's blue down here at the bottom. So for any instance if you're using this wirelessly you're getting some interference you just don't quite like the image you're getting or you have the opportunity to plug it in because you're using it in close proximity. I would go ahead and plug in the monitor. You always lose a little bit of clarity when you go um, wireless versus direct wire. You want to make sure that your ultrasound is off, so go ahead and line up on the top of your ultrasound. We're going to use the Limo plug. There is a red line, and on your Limo plug, there is a red dot. So line up the red dot and the red line, plug that in, turn your ultrasound back on. Now we went ahead and plugged in our monitor, but we have not told the monitor to switch and go to direct wire. It is still pulling wireless. So if we look on the top of the monitor, it, well, oh, there's a battery indicator. It is telling us, I can show you here, W, or it should say WLAV in that upper corner if it's using wireless. So I just hit the paw print button, I'm sorry, it'd be the upper left corner, and now it's saying VGA. What I just did is I hit that paw print button which changed the input. Just like a TV, you have to tell it what to draw from, whether it's a DVD player or cable or whatever, you have to change the input. So using that paw print button, press that to change the input VGA is your hard wire, and if I press that paw print button again in the upper left hand corner, it will tell you WLAV. Now it's reading wireless. So you can do both, you just have to tell the monitor which one you want to do. It doesn't automatically recognize it when you plug in the cord. So for example, if I go back to VGA, there we are. So if I go back to VGA and unplug this, I'm going to get a blue screen. It's, it's not getting any connection. So all I have to do is hit that paw print button and tell this monitor to go wireless and now I've got my image again. So that's kind of the main things on your 2.0 monitor. Um, if you purchased a RAM mount kit, the plate will be on the top, but we can go through the RAM mount here in just a moment. So that gives you a little bit more of an idea. All right, so another accessory that you can purchase with any of your ReproScan equipment is the RAM mount kit. So today I've got both the monitor and the flex case in front of me so I can show you how they both work. The top plate, if you purchase the RAM mount kit, we will have already pre-installed this. It will already be on the top of your monitor or on the back of your flex case, just like this, these screws unscrew and it lines up and we'll have already done that for you so it's a little bit easier quicker for you to get up and rolling. The rest of the RAM mount kit, so if your plate is on the top of your monitor or on the back of your flex to hang shoot side, then you have a arm and then you have a couple different options depending on how you're mounting this if you want to do it somewhere in your clinic, either on stocks, on shoots, whatever your setup is. If you want to, if you have a square pipe shoot, and want to use kind of a construction clamp, like an Irwin or a DeWalt construction clamp, there is a hole and at the end of that you can install this ball or you can put this on anything that has a, a bolt that just runs in there. The other option would be a two by four or anything that you can just put four screws in. This works well and then you can hang it right like that. This is not part of the RAM mount kit. This is just an accessory option but it is a claw. This works awesome if you are using any sort of round piping. Um, it works really well. It doesn't work on massive pipes, but it works really well on smaller pipes. Um, you can see it can get pretty large, but you know if you're getting an eight inch pipe, it's not gonna work obviously, but this works really well on most round pipe shoots. You can just clamp it on there, tighten this down, and it goes right in there. This setup allows you to either hang your flex ultrasound or the monitor in a lot of different positions at the shoot or for equine use with the flex and stocks or on a fence, things like that. So that would be your RAM mount kit. And if you have any other great ideas, we'd love to hear them here at the office.